today's Christmas spot, we are having a look at the NECA toys. This is the Retro Cloth Silent Night Deadly Nights Billy Chapman figure. Okay, so let's take the tape measure. Billy Chapman, minus his hat, is an eight inch tall figure. Okay, okay, so we'll go ahead and add the hat, which I will talk about during the review. And with the hat, the figure stands at eight and a half inches. He gets a couple of accessories, but not really a whole heck of a lot. He gets himself his ax, which I've already actually done an unboxing of this when I got the initial Scream Factory Show Factory Scream Factory release of Silent Night, Deadly Night came with the poster and came with, of course, the movie itself. So if you guys want to check that out. But even in the unboxing, I had mentioned that while I do like the look of the axe, it has a somewhat picture quality to it. Meaning that it looks like it's actually a photo of blood and the photo of metal over top of the plastic. I don't know if I like it, to be all honest. It does look like it's actually just more an image than it does look like it's actually been painted. The handle's been left pretty vacant of color. Sure, of course, it's got some more of a kind of, kind of burgundy brown, kind of a burgundy chestnut sort of color. I think chestnut's actually a lighter color, but it's a more reddish sort of wood. And you've got some grain work in there as well, but very, very minuscule. There's not really a whole lot happening here. The other thing he comes with is his hat, which unfortunately is one thing that falls off so very frequently. There's really, you can apply just a little bit of extra pressure to keep the hat on there, but it does seem every little bit of banging, the hat will come off. Initially, I was thinking, why did they even sculpt it so that the hat could come off? But I guess if you want to have Billy at any given point displayed without the hat, you could certainly do that as well. So I would retract, if I was to say, I would retract the idea of keeping the hat sculpted onto his head. I guess I do like the fact that you could take it off. Okay, so let's have a look at this figure. Like, I got a few little comments about this figure that we're going to discuss hopefully together. If you guys disagree, that's fine. Let me know down below in the comment section. But first things first, let's discuss his face. While I admit it does look like Billy from the movie, I can't help but feel like the paint seems slightly off. It comes across a little too pasty, if the best word I could weigh to describe the look on his face. In fact, let's bring in the box. We'll spin it around. On the back is an ideal face paint job done to Billy's face. It does really look quite a bit like him, as they've even painted like little bags under his eyes, you know, some little bit of rouge on the cheeks, and even painted his mouth. Unfortunately, though, the final product, as hopefully evident here in hand, comes across a little bit more pasty, a little bit more pale in complexion. The beard and everything else comes across nicely, but it's just, it's that face that I wish we had gotten this face or this paint job versus what we ended up getting here. I'm not knocking it because the sculpt is good, but I just think the paint could have been so much better. There's also a certain little bit of weird glazing over top of his eyes. I can't quite put my finger on why they would have done this. I guess it's to give him a sense of kind of wetness on his eyes, but it actually comes across more like he's glazed over. From the front, it doesn't look so bad, but if you turn it ever so slightly, it does look like he's got this weird kind of haze across his eyes. I've also got like a little bit of, just a little nick of something, a little nick of paint on the side of his face. Overlay, I, you have to be critical, of course. Uh, of course, me looking at this figure, I have to be honest with you guys as to how I feel about the figure. Ultimately, I'm just thrilled that we are getting a Billy Chapman figure but again, it could be a little bit better than I think what we ended up getting. The outfit is, of course, him wearing his Santa Claus outfit at Iris Toys, eventually snapping and going on a fun, jolly, murderous spree. But uh, I do find like the outfit seems way too lanky. He is, of course, a younger child, sure. He's in his late teens, 
but still he does have extra padding especially in the torso area here it's certainly not a Santa Claus outfit that sits fitted against his torso quite the contrary he does have extra padding on him even of course when he breaks into the girls I think what was her name Christine he breaks into her house they're hitting him with with fire cues and you can tell that he's got extra padding on him here it just looks like he's got absolutely no padding whatsoever I'd be try I would try actually to try to take the belt off and if there's enough extra give which I don't maybe there might be I might actually be inclined to try to put some extra stuffing in Santa's torso just so Billy looks a little bit more filled in the outfit on his that he's wearing is red yes and it's white with the fur around the, the pockets the lower trim and around the sleeves but it is it seems to me like it's the wrong choice of red red could have been a little bit more darker a little bit more richer it actually comes across a little bit more like a, like a pulsating neon red down onto his boots he's got his Santa Claus boots which only really go well actually to be fair they go a little further up than what what I would have expected and you've got a brand new sculpted foot here normally this would have been the leg of the retro cloth figure and then they just simply would have pegged the new foot on there but actually they gave him fully sculpted uh, Santa rubber boots which is a nice touch there's the undersoles of his feet boots look good the outfit generally looks good I feel it could be just again a, a, just a just a hair just a hair darker than what we're getting here and certainly it could have been a lot uh, he could have been a lot more filled out as well oh by the way also let's discuss his hands he's got some a pair of red gloves on which are sculpted actually fairly high up also on the sleeve they got a little bit of darker coloring added to there as well so it's not just the simple red that's been added overall nice on the gloves now to get him to wear or hold the axe you can obviously, of course, just have him just slide the axe into his hand like so. You can have him holding it this way. Or you can I guess have it over here as well. The hands both will allow you to hold the, the axe. Just simply a case of forcing it through the, the opening there. And you can have him holding it like this. Or, of course, if you want to get a little bit more creative, like he's going to be cutting off the head of a, of a snowman. Or bullies. All oh, those bullies you can go ahead and just slide it through the one hand then go ahead and slide it through the other and you can have it sitting a little bit lower I wish you could actually bring his head a little bit lower as well so you could get that more brooding look that he has in the movie and get his hat going you can have Billy pose like that which isn't bad I probably would ultimately go with that for my overall look let's pull out and there goes the hat again let's pull out the axe here there we go and have a look at Billy's articulation now his head is on a ball joint despite the fact that he's got all this extra beard going on here you can see there's the socket in which the head sits inside or the neck plugs into the socket of the head it would be really neat if you could take off the beard but obviously that, that can't happen that that would be ridiculous so the head does have a ball joint we'll go with that universal joints on the arms but the arms are so stiff getting them out bringing them out of course I want to be a little careful doing that forward and back on the arms he's got the bend in the elbow which you got to find kind of do this with your your finger find the crease and then you'll know where the hinge is got the swivel happening there in the hand in the waist forward and back on the legs on the out as well on the legs hinge on the knee and you've got the hinge on the foot by the way, the jacket also is Velcroed. Not really seeing why you would want to have to take it all off, but again, I might even entertain the idea of trying to get some extra like batting or stuffing and just kind of see if I can fill out the torso a little bit. Because while he's a pretty good looking figure, he's not nearly as round, a little fuller as he would be in the movie itself. One last thing I want to mention also for the Billy Chapman figure is he comes with the interior, that's in the inside of the box, comes with the interior of Iris Toys. This would be the back storage room where, well, of course, a couple of people were naughty 
and uh, punishment is necessary. You can go ahead and display Billy inside of that if it kind of helps add to the overall cool factor. Unfortunately though, because it is just a cardboard sleeve, it's not, it's not gonna stay. So you might wanna maybe just possibly glue the sides and you can maybe like glue the top so that it would kind of keep everything a little bit more contained and hopefully stay upright. But still a nice little addition piece that you can add to your existing Billy Chapman display. When news first leaked that Show Factory slash Scream Factory and NECA were teaming up once again to release a retro cloth figure slash Blu-ray release, I was super excited to find out that it was Billy Chapman, one of my all-time favorite horror Christmas movies, and one of which that I've already watched this year, still haven't had a chance yet to watch the second one, which is definitely going to happen before Christmas comes around. This is a great looking figure. He does miss a few marks. More importantly, like the coloring of his outfit seems slightly off, but the bigger problem for me is he's just not as hefty. It's not as padded as one would hope for Billy to, to end up looking here. The face sculpt is good, but it's not quite the paint sculpt or the paint application that we were kind of led to believe when we looked at the packaging. When they released photos of Billy, he looked really good. I feel like in hand, Billy, just doesn't look as good paint-wise to what he could potentially have looked. But still, this is a great figure. I never thought I'd ever see the day when Billy was going to be released here in plastic form, though B is retro cloth, but still, the fact that we're getting a Billy from Silent Night, Deadly Night, I am super thrilled. I hope that maybe Scream Factory and NECA next year, as a possibility, may release a Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, in which we may get ourselves a very crazy a Ricky Caldwell, and I'm super excited. I would be super excited to pick that up for sure as well. Either way, still a great looking figure. If you're a fan of Silent Night, Deadly Night, you definitely would want to be picking this one up for yourself. And again, much like the Chucky, the only way you're going to be able to get this one is by ordering the deluxe release of Silent Night, Deadly Night that comes with the Billy Chapman figure, and also comes with the poster as well, which I've done an unboxing of this on this channel as well that you can guys can go and check out if you want. Uh, today's Christmas spot, once again, we're having a look at the Scream Factory NECA release of the Silent Night, Deadly Night Deluxe Edition. This was Retro Cloth Billy Chapman. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below, Bunkos, as you don't want to hit the naughty list this year. And of course, you'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos coming onto this channel. Speaking of future videos, of course, got a whole ton of, uh, of course, uh, Christmas goodies lined up before the end of this month. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching as you always do, guys. I'll see you guys next time.